glory to God. Would you shout with me? This is my year of greater victory. Hallelujah. And our text is from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. I believe we can all say this now by heart. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have been dealing with this topic last uh, Sunday. We delved into the aspect of victory over ourselves. Because if you do not have victory over self, over those things that hinder you, then you will not be able to enjoy the greater victory, even though you carry the covenant. So we looked at the life of a man who carried the covenant in the Old Testament and yet had struggles till he came to Peniel, till he came to that point. So we emphasize that. Um, we want to continue to look at his life. So today, I want to summarize all that we did last Sunday in the word Peniel. So that was in Genesis chapter 32. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay, let's just read the whole verse again so we can reconnect. Praise the name of the Lord. So we just read from verse 24 to 31. Then Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when he saw that, he did not prevail against him. He touched the socket of his hip. And the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. 29, then Jacob asked him saying, tell me your name, I pray. And he said, why is it that you ask about my name? And he blessed him there. 30. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God's face to face and my life is preserved. Peniel. We dealt with this Peniel. So Peniel, in summary, is a place of seeking and seeing God's face. If you're going to experience the greater victory, you must seek a change. A change of character and attitude. But where do you seek that change? So Jacob was alone, seeking God's face. And God responded. And showed him who he was. That he's been a man that struggles. He struggles with men. He struggles with God. He struggles. Yet he was carrying a covenant. And so. Jacob stopped for that change. And God changed his name. Made him to know who he was. That he was a priest, hallelujah, a covenant carrier. Glory be to God. So, summary, I want to make a few points. That Peniel is a place of seeking and seeing God's face. It is also a place of divine encounter. But this divine encounter, like many often uh, seek, is for divine change. It is for change of character and attitude. When that character and attitude happen, it's a turning point. It's a place of turning, a turning point for pursuit of our destiny. Think about it in your life. 
Have you experienced tenure? Where God speaks to your heart and say, my son, this way, my daughter, this way will not leave you there. It's time to change. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and open, I will come in. And I will enter. I will live in him. I will eat with him. I will sup with him. Hallelujah. Have you come to Peniel? That is Peniel. Peniel is a place of seeking continually for the transformation. Our text for this specific victory over ourselves. You remember? Is Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Let us look at it again to reconnect with the penial. Because from penial, you hear where we're going. He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that true and acceptable and perfect will of God. So Peniel is a place of continually seeking for the transformation. However, transformation happens by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. The transformation happens by the Spirit of God. And that's where we are coming to now. So, in Jacob's life, two principal places were established that you and I must know and practice as well. The place of turning, the turning point in Jacob's life was the place of Peniel, the place of seeking and seeing God's face for a change. And the second place that we must know is Bethel. Bethel. So today, I want to speak to us to move from Peniel to Bethel. And even in Bethel, remember that Peniel is needed continually. So in Christ Jesus and by the Holy Spirit, these two places in the life of this man, Jacob, who carried so much of the old covenant, the covenant that God gave to Abraham, Abraham transferred to Isaac, and Isaac transferred to Jacob. That covenant. Uh, rather, I made a mistake to call it old covenant. That's the original covenant, actually. Forgive me, the original covenant. Jacob, a carrier of the original covenant that God gave to Abraham. And Abraham transferred to Isaac. Isaac transferred to Jacob. So the life of Jacob had Peniel and Bethel. Now, in Christ Jesus and by the Spirit of God, both Peniel and Bethel have been fused together. And we can have both Peniel and Bethel in Christ Jesus by the Holy Spirit. And that's what we want to explore this moment. Hallelujah. So at Peniel, we have our turning point. At Peniel, we seek that change. Anything in your life you do not like, you can sort it out at Peniel, seeking God's sake. Being re renewed, transformed by the renewing of your mind. You have to go to God and ask God for it to be taken away. 
You see, the problem is that there are so many people who are complacent with their lives. Their ways are right. They are always Mr. Right. Beloved brothers and sisters, if you are complacent, you cannot have that good and perfect will of God. Why? Because the scripture says it here very clearly. It says, do not be conformed to this world. That is Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, I believe verse 18, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, uh, if I can go there very quickly, the Bible says that we all with unveiled face, with open faces, beholding us in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, the glory of God, the glory of Jesus Christ, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. If you think you have arrived, if you think you know it all, you will miss the mark. You will never, and I say it clearly and boldly, you will never come to that place where you prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. But what does God want us to do? To grow in the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, to continue to teach us. So, Daniel, the place of continually seeing God's face and seeking God's face for a change, for a transformation by His Spirit, as we have seen there in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. We are to continually behold, look at this glory of God that Jesus is radiating by his spirit to us. And we are to then make the change, transformation, transformation. That way we will grow, we will grow, we will grow into the full measure of the stature of Christ. Glory be to God. So Jacob wrestled at Daniel and got the turning point. And then Jacob moved to Bethel. Praise the name of the Lord. I want us to go look at Bethel. In Genesis chapter 35, I think I will read the whole long scripture so we will get the message. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. This is lovely. Genesis chapter 35, we'll read from verse 1 to 15. Then God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there and make an altar there to God who appeared to you when you fled from the face of Esau, your brother. Bethel, make an altar. Hallelujah. So, Peniel, the place of seeking and seeing God's change, God's transformation. Bethel, their place of the altar of God. Hallelujah. And what does this Bethel mean? Let's read on. And Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, put away foreign gods that are among you, purify yourself and change your garments. What garment are you still wearing, child of God? Even though you have met God, you have met Jesus, you have given your life to Jesus, you are born again. What garment are you still wearing? The garment of deceit and lies. Complacency is a big problem in the life of anybody at all. Complacency is the state of feeling you are okay. You are just satisfied with yourself, and there is no further thing you can do. Complacency is bad. Oh, those who are complacent, you will always hear them say, this is how I am. Ah, you know me, my own, I just give it to you like that. 
You have been giving it to him like that, like that. What has it brought you? There is a popular saying that you, I believe you must have heard. If you do the same thing, you get the same result. In this year, 2021, God has given us his word that it is our year of greater victory. But if you do the same thing that you have been doing, you will remain the same place you have been. There is a word that I say and challenge myself and challenge other people. At times, some people don't like it, especially some religious people who say they are Christian. I say you are where you are because of what you do or don't do. I am where I am because of what I do or don't do. Life is a choice. You see why I make that statement? Because Jesus Christ has been given to all humankind. Anyone who chooses to look to Jesus and live, will look to him and live. Anybody who refuses to look to him and perish, just as the Bible says, he will perish. That's life. He's a choice. So complacency, being satisfied with your state, especially when you are not getting the results that you desire in life, is bad. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18 that we saw there says, we have to continually look to the glory of Jesus, the glory of God, and be transformed by his spirit, the Holy Ghost. From glory to glory. We are to move from glory to glory. From glory to glory. From glory to glory. Some people think that this glory is when they wave hands and a thousand people fall under the anointing. Ha 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 ha. No, that's not it too. This glory is the life of God that you live and manifest to the world and to please God. That's what it is. So Jacob, God said to Jacob, go to Bethel. Remember, we were in Genesis chapter 32, where Peniel, he, he went to Peniel. He was alone, and he wrestled with God till the change came. He asked God, why is my life a struggle? Why? I carry a covenant. I can see the blessing. The original Abrahamic covenant of blessing is upon me. My father Isaac poured the blessing upon me. I carry the covenant. I can see the blessing. Yet, I am struggling with my character, my attitude of being a supplanter. And God visited him. If you desire a change, God will help you to change. Because the change comes by the Spirit of God. The transformation comes by the Spirit of God. And that's where we're going. You must come to understand the place of altar, that you are the altar. So in the altar now, both the Peniel and Bethel have been fused together. So you can seek and see God. And you can have God living in you. I think I've summarized the message already. So Peniel, the place of seeking and seeing God for a turnaround, for a change, change of character, particularly that hinders you. And Bethel, a place, the dwelling place where God dwells. Hallelujah. Where the presence of God is ever abiding. That is Bethel. So Jacob said, we are going to Bethel, so no more strange gods, no more. No more, you must drop every strange god. In Bethel, it is only you and the presence of God, the Holy Ghost, in Bethel. Because Bethel is the house of God. So Genesis chapter 35, verse 3 again. Let's run through it. He said, then let us arise and go up to better, and I will make an altar there to God, who answered me in the day of my distress, and has been with me in the way which I have gone. So they gave Jacob all the foreign gods, all the foreign gods, 
Oh, man of God, are you still carrying charm in your weight? Daughter of God, are you still visiting juju houses? Oh, child of God, are you still running from one prayer house to the other, being with the oil being poured upon your head, poured upon this and that? They are telling you, you bring this, bring that, do this, do that. You are the vessel of God, the dwelling place of the Most High. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Today is the day for you to yield to God. Leave all those deceivers. Leave all those liars. And come to Jesus. And receive the Holy Spirit of God. And then learn to walk with him. As we will see in this example. So they gave Jacob all the foreign gods which were in their hands. And the earrings which were in their ears, and Jacob hid them under the terebin tree, which was by Shechem. And they joined it, and the terror of God was upon the cities that were all around them, and they did not pursue the sons of Jacob. Be not afraid, God is with you, child of God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So Jacob came to Lutz, that is Bethel, which is the land of Canaan, he and all the people who were with him. Seven, and he built an altar there and called the place El Bethel because there God appeared to him when he fled from the face of his brother. So Bethel, is the house of God, whose house you and I now are. We are the house of God. Let's quickly confirm that in Genesis chapter 28, verses 17 to 20. I may not be able to take all. Let's uh, look at it very quickly. Okay, verse 17. Uh, let's read from verse 16. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely, the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven, the house of God, the gate of heaven. Bethel is the house of God. So Jacob, even though he had come to God, Continued with his life till the turning point at Peniel, the change of character and attitude, the change from complacency to saying, ah, My own is like this, so, ah, ah, my life, ah, me, that's how I am. That is not how you are anything. You can make a change. Your life is plaguing you, your life is hindering you. You've got to change your character, change your ways. Look at good example. That's what the Bible teaches. Look at a good example. Look at the lives of people who have achieved in Christ Jesus and follow their example. Look at the word of God, what the word says, and do what the word says, which is what we're going to look at. And I keep reminding us of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Note it down and read it. And we all with open face, unveiled, that is our face uncovered to see the things that are not going right within us and without, everywhere. We, with that unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, as in a glass, as in a reflective glass, the glory of Jesus Christ, the glory of God, the glory of the Lord are being changed, being transformed into that same image from glory to glory, from glory to glory, from glory to glory. I decree over your life that you will go from glory to glory in this year 2021 as you drop complacency, as you drop laziness, as you drop that lifestyle and character and attitude that have been hindering you and you move on and continue in penial 
and in Bethel. Praise the name of the Lord. So I will jump now uh, because of time. Let's just read from verse 9 then. Then God appeared to Jacob again when he came from Padan Aram and blessed him. And God said to him, your name is Jacob. Your name shall not be called Jacob anymore, but Israel shall be your name. So he called his name Israel. So that's referring again to Kenya. Also God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply a nation and a company of nations shall proceed from you. And kings shall come from your body. The land which I gave Abraham and Isaac, I give to you and to your descendants. After you, after you, I give this land. Thirteen. Then God went up from him in the place where he talked with him. So Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he talked with him, a pillar of stone, and he poured a drink offering on it, and he poured oil on it. Fifteen. And Jacob called the name of the place where God spoke with him, Bethel. So Jacob came back to Bethel. Bethel is a place where God is revealed. Hallelujah. God reveals himself to us in his glory, in his awesomeness. Bethel is the house of God. Is a place where we hear God concerning our lives. The things we should do. And brothers and sisters, there is no other way of living in Bethel than in the Holy Spirit. So very quickly, let's look at that. First Corinthians chapter 3, 16 and 17. What does the Bible say there? 16, he said, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? 17 says, if anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple you are? Uh, Romans chapter 12 that we read, verses 1 and 2 says, I beseech you by the mercies of God. I beseech, I'm pleading with you. I beg you by the mercies of God, child of God, covenant child. You are carrying a covenant like Jacob. The threat in the line of the original covenant. See how the covenant was so magnified in the life of Jacob. Yet he was struggling. Cheating and being cheated. Deceiving and being deceived. Till he came to Penia. The turning point. The turning point. And he turned around. And then he moved to Bethel. God said to him, you have to move back to Bethel. The house of God. The place where God is with you permanently and consistently and constantly. Beloved brothers and sisters, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are the temple of the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit dwells in you if you have come to Jesus Christ. But are you the one defiling the temple of God? God says in the word, his word here, if anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. It doesn't matter who. If another person outside tries to defile your body that is the temple of God, God says, I will destroy him. If you yourself, you are the one defiling the temple of God, what does God say? I will destroy him. It is a dangerous thing, my brothers and sisters, to defile the temple of God. Let's look at 1 Corinthians, continue, chapter 6. Verse 19, again, what does the Bible say? It says, let me read all the way from 15. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. 16. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. 
flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Sins against his own body. Come out from it. 19, the last verse. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? 20, for you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You are the temple of God. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, the dwelling place of the Spirit of God. You are the house of God. I am the house of God. So, Daniel and Bethel have been rolled together in the new covenant. Hallelujah. In Christ Jesus, we now have both Daniel, the place of transformation, and Bethel, the place of constant presence of God and power and manifestation of God. Hallelujah. We have all together. So, if you stick the chain, you will experience the transformation by the Spirit of God now. Don't be complacent. God does not approve, like love, appreciate complacency. We are to grow from glory to glory. Whatever level you are now, you can seek a higher level. God will transform you to that greater glory, greater level in the name of Jesus. And that's why he has given us the theme for this year, our year of greater victory. You shall enjoy greater victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by the quickening spirit of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. Second Corinthians, ah, chapter 6. And we will look from verse 16. Hallelujah. Look at it with me and see what God has done for us. Kenya, the turning point, the place of transformation by the power of God, where we meet. God. We have encounter, encounter of change. I'm talking about encounter that changes, that transforms who you are, transforms your perspective in life towards God. To better the place of constant dwelling in the presence of God. Where you know and you know and you know and you know it that God dwells in you, dwells with you. God is for you. Emmanuel is his name, Jesus Christ. God with us. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 16. It says, and what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out. Do what? Come out. Come out from every institution of deceit and lie. All those people that are now telling you to make it in life, make it, make it, make it, make it. I will show to us what Jesus left with us. Ah, God Almighty, help me. When I saw the way the church was going, people seeking money everywhere, I had to go to God and pray. I said, God Almighty, if you give us power to heal the sick and do all these miracles, why can't we pray for money to come so we can have money? The Spirit of God spoke to me very clearly, expressly. He said, my son, I have blessed humanity and I have given man work to do. When you walk, I bless the work of your hand. That is how you make wealth. But why I give you power to heal the sick and cast out devils 
is so that people don't die prematurely without fulfilling my will and my purpose. So that's why I give you power to cast out devil, to heal the sick, to help the oppressed, so that people don't die prematurely, that they may live and continue to seek me and fulfill my will and my purpose. Because I do not take pleasure in the death of a sinner. My desire, my will is that all should repent and come to the saving grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, brothers and sisters, God Almighty will give you power to make wealth. That's not in doubt at all. God has blessed you. He blessed Jacob that we are talking about here. By the Spirit of God that is upon you, you are blessed. The Almighty God will bless your barn. He will bless your, your oil. He will bless your wine. He will bless. He, the, he has blessed the ground for you. He has blessed. The heaven is open upon you in the name of Jesus. But come out from deceit. Come to Jesus. And come to recognize that you are now that vessel, the house of God, where the Holy Spirit dwells. And the Holy Spirit, the house of God, has a duty, has a responsibility. The first responsibility is that you must be holy. You must be holy. It must be a holy place. And there must be no deceit, lies, manipulating people in all ways, in all directions, come out from among them. So I'll read this scripture quickly because I will about to round it up. I'll read from verse 16 again. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. 17, therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. From Penia to Bethel. Now in Christ Jesus, Penia and Bethel are all combined, and we are that Bethel of God, the house of God. For the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, lives in us. Now, what are we supposed to do? We are to cry to God. Next Sunday, we will continue with the responsibility, the empowerment that the Spirit of God that has been given to us does in our lives. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God Almighty, thank you for your word. Thank you for bringing us to Bethel, making us now in the new covenant of the blood of Jesus the Bethel, the place, the dwelling place of the Most High God, the house of God, even as we have seen in the scripture. Lord, we ask that you help us to fulfill all the responsibility that we are supposed to fulfill and glorify you as your house. Thank you, our Lord and our God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, in Matthew chapter 10, Matthew chapter 10, verse 8, you send the disciples out and you said, heal the sick, cast out the devil, raise the dead. Freely you have received, freely give. And so, Lord, I stand upon that word. And I command every sick person that is hearing my voice now be healed. In the name of Jesus, I command the dead to rise up and live by the power of the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus. I command every leper be cleansed in the name of Jesus. Whoever is oppressed by the devil, I cast out that devil right now. Okay? You foul spirit seeks to oppress that life. Come out and don't enter him. Don't enter her. Don't enter them anymore. 
Almighty God, thank you. And let your kingdom be established in the lives of all these your children that have hurt me. And let your glory cover all the nations of the earth as the water covers the sea. Let your will be done today, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. And in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The Almighty God bless you, brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining and uh, hope to see you again.